Welcome back to Samsung Games, the place to find new strategy games, and today I have a treat for you. This is a game that was given to me by Slitter, and it's made by Matrix Games, and it's called War Plan Pacific. And this is a war game, and this is a fairly complicated and deep war game. Like, there's a lot of stuff going on in it. So we're just gonna scratch the surface in the video. Essentially, I'm just gonna show you how to begin if you were to play the game, like explain a little bit of the UI and some basic stuff about it. And there's a lot more to this game. There's a manual and just like it's always with Slater and Games, it's very, very long. But yeah, if you wanna know anything, there's a manual folly and we're just gonna go through the very much the basics. And I'm playing as Japan in the Sino-Japanese War that happened on July 7th, 1937 to September 1st, 1939. With the Japanese invasion of Manchuria in 1931, the tension between Japan and China has been building. Japan's imperialist policies have placed a demand on natural resources the county is deficient in. The incident at the Marco Polo Bridge begins the Second Sino-Japanese War. Let's go. The music's very action-packed, I like it. It's like, let's go! The brutality and severity of World War II started in 1937 with an incident on the border of Manchuria and China. It sparked an eight-year war between the Japanese and the Chinese. The objectives of the Japanese, that's us, is to take and hold as many objectives as possible until Germany declares war on Poland, September 1st, 1939. So we have a little over two years. A frontal assault is expected, but the Japanese must be prepared to take the coastal ports as well as Shanghai and Canton, our far objectives to march by land. As the Chinese, your position is to delay your adversary as much as possible till your army can form a strong defensive line. Yeah, we don't care. We don't play as the Chinese right now. Alright, so here we've got our units, also over here. Now you can toggle on the objectives. Let me click them over here so it covers with this yellow so we can see them over here and this is actually a good time to kind of go a little bit over the AI so we're gonna talk about the map so we can turn on the control of the map so you can see this is kind of like the basic map we're looking at the geography and the terrain the terrain is important because if you hover over a different terrain spots you can for example see next to the shield it's like the defense number this is really important also certain uh, spots like this one give you production which is going to be super important we'll talk about it later and then because it can also have strategic places like ports and things like that this is important for supply because supply in this game is a really big deal so we can click on the control on and off then we can click on hexes, so this will just show us the hexes. I like to have the hexes on, but obviously it depends on you. Logistics, this is uh, important so that we can see railways and different supply lines. Railways are useful because you can grab a unit and you can move through the rail, uh, over the railway. So you can, instead of, so for example, here, I could have like small steps, but if I do a railway move like this, I could actually jump immediately to, let's say over here, right? Normally I wouldn't be able to do that. Then we've got supply. So here you can see how well supplied which hex is. And if I remember correctly, the number determines how many turns the unit can last here without getting supplied in order to survive. Well. So essentially if a unit's on railway, it's very well supplied. So it can last nine turns without being supplied again. But if it's a unit kind of far off, it hasn't been supplied very well, so it won't last very long. I believe so. If, if anyone knows better, you can let me know. Enemy action. There's no enemy action. Weather. Seems like our weather is fine. Just turn off the supply. Units. Obviously, we want them on. Trade convoys. I don't actually see any trade convoys right now. Trade convoys are important because it allows you to destroy um, enemy uh, production. Again, we'll talk more about it later. So we're going to keep it with the hexes on and with the control on because that's what I like to see. The supply we're gonna turn it off all right so when you click on a land unit like this one you can see a lot of information so this three five the three is average between your attack and defense our attack and defense is three as you can see over here and five is how many essentially action points you have action points can either be used to move or to attack and if you hover over a space it's telling you how many action points it takes to get there so for example take us three action points to get here you can change this setting in the options to, for example, give you information like strength. Total strength is essentially health, which you can see here. We've got 10 out of 10. And action points or some other information if you'd like. There are a couple things we can do with the unit. We can obviously move, we can also attack, or we can defend or repair. 
So defend is just going to give you a defensive bonus if the enemy attacks you and repair is obviously going to allow you to heal yourself. Now, this is our attack number is three and uh, so on. If you click on this unit here, we can see that this is a Chinese 29 root army. It is at full strength we, and it has two entrenchments. We don't know anything else about it, but we, were gonna, we will want to attack it. If you hover over a unit, you can see the odds of attack. This is a bit unusual. If you played Panzer Corps or Unity of Command, you assume that this is kind of like the damage we'll do to them. So two strength to them and they'll do one to us. That's not how this works. This is essentially odds of successful attack. So currently we have two to one, so essentially 66% chance of successful attack. In the manual, it will actually tell you that you shouldn't do attack if you have less than three to one odds. So you might ask, well, how do I do it? Because this is obviously my strongest unit. If this one can do it, who can do it? Well, this game uh, is sort of expecting you to combine attacks. So what we're going to do is I'm going to move this unit here and this is going to give me still two operations and then I'm going to do a combined attack with all three. So you can either click control and click all the adjacent units towards the enemy and then we have four in one attack. Alternatively, you can click shift on top of an enemy unit and all units surround will attack it. So let's do an attack. Oh, sorry, I did that wrong. So I can actually show you the shift thing. Right. And we can see the losses. So we actually didn't do any loss to them and they didn't do any loss to us. So let's try this. Oh no, sorry, I misclicked that. Okay, let's try this again. All right, so we managed to attack them. They are retreating because I still have, well, actually if I move, I'm gonna lose my action points with this unit, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna step with this unit on pecking. So I actually got my very first objective very early on. So we can see. Now here on packing, you can actually see that, um, actually you can't see it, but you can see that the, you have the first zero and the second zero is red. Why is it red? Well, this hex originally belonged to the enemy and it gave them a production. For example, if you hover over, let's say this, you're gonna see that it says a nine in the same place and that's production. And what production is important for is it allows you to build you're gonna need other things as well, but production is a really big thing because it allows you to build new units. And now I've actually taken away his points, however much he was getting from packing to get production. So he now has a less production. I'm actually gonna show it to you now because I feel like it's a good segue to production. So if you click on build here, and I know this feels maybe a bit more like a guide, but I need to explain this stuff to you in order to for us to play the game because otherwise we won't be able to, able to do it. So here in the economy, we've got production, oil, manpower, logistics, shipyards, comment production, and specialty production. So the most important thing are essentially like the first four, I would say, well, actually the first five. These are the things you're going to need to build new units. So the economy, it, it's a bit of a strange naming, but the economy is essentially how much you, how much you get per turn. Upkeep is how much you're using per turn. Currently we're using seven oil per turn. So if we gain 25, then we use seven for upkeep. We're actually only going to have 18 in the next turn. And then how, this is how much we have in the stockpile. And I could build a unit. For example, I could go to infantry division or infantry army, let's say, and I could build a 35th army with a strength of 30. That's pretty huge. Defense of five, operation five. I can't see attack though. What's your attack? It doesn't say. Interesting. Oh, artillery three. Okay. I might just go with like a basic. Yeah, no, let, let's do it. Let's do it. Why not? So let's do it. It's going to cost me 180 production. So actually we don't have enough. We only have 127. So we could build a cavalry corp though. With a strength of 20, defense of four, seven operation points and three artillery. The first Mongol Cavalry. Okay, so we're gonna purchase it. It's gonna take 120 days to do. So if you see this game for the first time, like me, you're gonna be like, 120 turns? What? There's no point in building anything in this game. Don't worry about that. A, a, a turn is not a day. A turn is about 14 days, I believe. So we're gonna purchase this unit. We bought it and this is being built right now. We can also build Navy, Air Force, and some support buildings. The support buildings will allow you to increase your supply and things like that, or coastal defense, anti-air defense, and etc. So just so you know. Then we've got convoys. So here we can control your convoy routes. This is super important because there are a couple of ways to take away your enemy production, either by what we just did, by taking over Peking, or 
by destroying their convoy. So if you have a convoy that's moving and the enemy can get to it, they might be able to destroy it. I was, I was wondering if this is a convoy, but it's, it's not, it's something else. Uh, you can destroy it and take, and actually not only you will take uh, away their production so they can get, but you will also be able to steal, I believe, 33% of their production. So it's actually pretty cool. Then here we've got advancements. Advancement uh, allows you to essentially upgrade or invest into the progress of a specific area. So you can say, hey, I want to focus on heavy armor or interceptors and things like that. Then a war panel, so this is not available in the same area, so we don't care. Reports, and then we've got combat logs, and uh, here we've got deploy. This is important, so we can have units here that are ready. Uh, actually, we don't have any units ready yet, but upon the next turn, we're going to have this bunch of units ready, and we can deploy them somewhere. All right, so let's keep uh, focusing on our combat here. So we took over Peking, but we want to make sure we're kind of protecting as well as, as well as we can. This is three to two odds. We won't be able to get better odds because I don't think we're going to be able to get anywhere close enough. So I'm just going to move a little bit around with some of these other units. This is a mixed BDE. Not sure what that is, but let's just go. How do we want to attack here? This is a 2-2. Two -two. So I'm going to use my plane to do an airstrike. So with airstrikes... Oh, this is something I forgot to say. You could do a strategic bombing on a resource point. For example, on, on let's say here to again take away some of their production. So, when you set this up here, you can change this from mission only to full support. What this means is that if I think enemy plane comes by, you're gonna be able to fight against that. And then there's a setup here, yeah, change in advancement. Yeah, here you can change from close support to strategic bombing. So we could say, hey, I want you to bomb it doesn't seem like we have a range for this support spot, and this isn't giving them any production. Probably could have used that previously, but that's okay. Uh, we can focus on naval air or anti-submarine warfare. So we're just going to do cold support, and I think we're going to hit... Let's just hit this this thing. Let's go. Uh, the way this works with airstrikes is that typically only on the first attack, airstrikes on a unit you have a chance to give them actual strength losses otherwise it's more about taking away their operational steps and i believe their attacks or something but you cannot take away their strength with just an attack like the strength points as you saw like the zero there yeah uh only on the first strike and then not afterwards yeah that's how i believe how let that one uh, that's how the tutorial said i, I didn't I was like not fully 100% sure what exactly does that mean, but you know. We could move closer here to do like a combined attack against this thing in Tianjin, but we're gonna be a bit open in here. I'm gonna risk it. Yeah, let's do this one more time. It's only 2 to 1. No, it's still 3 to 1 here. Yeah, well, we try, we try. And I'm gonna grab this unit and take a railway. Can we not go by a railway? Come on. We'll go over there. You can also move. You can also use your railway and kind of come come help out. We're gonna keep this unit here on the port to kind of protect it, I think. Now here we've got some naval units that we can move around. We're gonna move towards Sink Tao. Yeah. Let's go. 21st army. Oh, we should, we should have. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what we should have done is we should have taken these, these units with us. <laughs> okay, well, maybe we gotta go back. Uh, there should be a way to, that we can like... Yeah. Yeah, may maybe we can only take like one at a time. But we'll see. Yeah, we're, we're gonna leave that alone for now. It's okay. Alright, so I think we're done with everything we wanted to do. You can also click here to go to like the next operational unit. It allows you to click on rail move, not necessarily on like the submarine move. But can you like straight up move into the water? It's just like there. Okay, that doesn't work. Okay, well, we'll just leave it. Oh, we still have an attack here. 3-2, do we? Are we actually just gonna defend? Because we want to make sure we don't lose Peking. So this is going to increase it. Our defend is now 8, which is pretty good. So they're gonna have to do a really big attack to get to us. 
Yeah, and uh, we could here with this airplane, we could do a repair upgrade because we have lost some strength. So this will allow us to increase it. So let's just end the turn. Yep. All right. So they're moving their units around. They're actually retreating, which is which is good for us because we can do some more damage. I like it. I like it. All right, no reports available. And let's go. No battle recorded this turn. I'm just gonna turn the battles off, we don't need that. All right. So, what do we've got here? If, if, what if we take this unit? Oh, this is gonna take four turns to move there. See, it's like never gonna get any attacks. So it just like gets towards the enemy and that's it. Let's click with the shift, yeah. And we're gonna do an attack over here. Great, so we, but if you actually look at the battle info, we actually took a loss as well. So as if you could, however, over this one, you can see that we now have nine out of 10 strength. So we took a little bit of a loss here, but I think that's all right. Let's do a combined attack on this unit. Great, we didn't take any loss this time around. If we move to here, we only have one attack left, but I think, I think it's, oh, six to one, beautiful. Beautiful, we took another loss over here, which is not ideal. But I think, I think we're still doing pretty good job. Let's take this unit, move closer, and we'll do another one of these combined attacks. Yeah, 7-1, beautiful. We're taking some losses over here, but then we have 30 total, so it's pretty fine. I'm actually not gonna step into Peking because we can just move around this way and we're gonna get a bit of a bonus. Now, unfortunately, if you're on a river, obviously we're not getting as well, as good um, defense. So it's like one as opposed to here, but it's like, or he well where we are it's 1.3 is what i meant to say but i think it's still like better than nothing all right if you do a combined attack on these guys great that's a great damage you don't really have much stuff you're just gonna stand on tianjin and this is oh i should oh, nah, okay if i can i undo nah, okay uh, i was gonna show you like how much how much production it, it would do like before i stepped on it but i kind of forgot about it i, I apologize for that because it would have been a nice way to kind of show you how we how we uh, take away their production, but now yeah, let's do another airstrike here. Are we gonna focus on strategic bombing? I think, or actually bombing armies. If we do strategic bombing, we can't strategically bomb anything because there's nothing there. We could bomb an airfield though. Yeah, let's do that. Let's bomb an airfield. Yeah, it mostly just meant that we lost and they didn't lose anything. That was not great. Let's try this again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah, from the dev, really good offense there. Who would have thought? I mean, everyone. But it, look, we tried. You know, sometimes you just gotta try things. It'd be cool. What is this? Japanese Kwatung army. Well, why are you lazing around up top? Let's go. What about you? Japanese fifth garrison. Just heal yourself. You've got like nothing on you. Do we want these people here on this board? We probably do, so we'll keep them there. All right, now I'm gonna do the deploying because I, I wanted to show you. All right, let's deploy my beautiful, beautiful units. Bam, go. I'm gonna try to deploy them all on the railway line so that I can move them around. Wait, uh, then I'm gonna move. I, I can't move them this time, can I? No. You know what? Let's let's deploy the rest. I'll deploy the rest here, maybe. Just move them around. And the unit that we build, the Mongol Cavalry, is going to be ready on November 4th. It's going to take a while, but it's going to get there. And it took us... Alright, how do I take... Fleet. Supply Beachhead. Three lands unit received supply. Well, that's great, but I, I want to take the land units with me. Okay, now, embark full operation. And, okay, so now, now we embarked. Embark zero points due to partial land move. Okay. So essentially we, we have to get on top of the ship and then we can embark, which... Oh, this is an airstrike? First air division. Um, could you do like, like a naval bombing or something? Or strategic attack sink towel? What are you doing if you can't even attack things out? Let's get over here. Maybe next time we'll be able to do some better damage. I'm a little disappointed with this unit. You guys also, like, I need you to get on this ship. So let's just get closer. 
embark zero operation points yeah okay let's i mean i'm fine with having all of them embark so at least next turn we can move i'm fine if they can move right now just as long oh actually they can move immediately okay let's go then i no okay they can move only this can move okay sorry sorry if <laughs> this is like <laughs> I read in the, in the tutorial mostly about air, air units in the manual and the other things. I wasn't focusing so much on the name. I was like, I'll figure it out. Well, <laughs> apparently not that well. Oh, do we want to set up some sort of a focus? No, I think we're good. Well, let's move a little bit backwards. I just want to make sure they don't like insta kill me or something. I don't know where they've got their units over here, so we just don't want to end up in a situation where we just like immediately die. Because I, I, our units, especially the land units on, on the boats or the ships, they're going to be like super weak. So you don't want to like have them stand there and then be like, ah, oh, you're dead. You know, it's, it's not great. All right. So now all of you, I would like you to go here. Could you disembark? Um, or can you only disembark on like your own hex? Because that'd be unfortunate. Can I disembark here? You don't have the movement. So if I move you here, could you disembark? Yeah, okay, okay, that works. Please disembark. No battle recorded this turn. You also please disembark. Okay, it works. I, I wasn't sure, but it's, it's fine. This is a weird place to disembark, but sure, disembark. Okay. All good. No battles. We are alive. We're moving now it does mean that all of this is unprotected this is giving me a lot of so actually we're gonna move one of these backwards because this is giving me a lot of production points and if the enemy comes here and destroyed we're, we're like kaput oh this is interesting we can see the way they moved that's cool i like it i like it a lot all right so let's do some more fighting let's grab our beautiful unit that always just stands around and does nothing Sometimes it's just what it takes. And we're gonna do a combined attack. Four to one. Beautiful. I think we destroyed that unit. Mm, the problem is there's... Actually, we could move here and do an attack. Over there. Perfect. We took a little bit of a loss, though. We're still at 29 out of 30 strength, but we only have effectiveness of 51%. Uh, if I remember correctly, every time we attack, it lowers your effectiveness a little bit. So the consecutive attacks are a little bit, like, weaker. But I think that's fine. Let's do a combined attack here. And we're gonna use the rest of our points to try to repair. What I don't know is whether the repair works the same way as it works, for example, in Fantasy General, where essentially you're resting, and if an enemy attacks you, it kind of stops the repair. Or whether this is like irrelevant of the enemy actions, we'll get some extra strength, and then they can choose to attack us if they want to. I, I, I don't know the answer to that. Let me just click on the convoys. Yeah, no trade convoys. Okay. Okay. All right, we've got some stuff over here, so we could move. Oh, actually, if we were to move here, we could have done an attack. Or we can go and attack. Oh, this is three, two. This is not great. You know what? Let's, uh... Let's use the action point. So we're not going to repair. We're just going to use the action point. Whatever. That's fine. Is this a good... This has a really good protection, this Hex. So I'm just gonna step on it. Just because it gives me a very nice protection, so why not? Also, this unit has terrible defense, so it's gonna need it. If we're being honest. Alright, if I do a combined attack here, it's still only 2 to 1. Hmm. Well, there's not much else I can do, honestly. Alright, we'll, we'll do it. Mm, we took a lot of- we took heavy losses and they took nothing. If we switch the two of you... Oh, I didn't click that properly, sorry. Two to one, sure. Yeah, we're just not hitting them the way we want to. Just gonna stop now. We could, however... Now nah, let's just repair. Probably not gonna do anything with the plane. Oh, we're a little open here when it comes to the king. 
That's not not ideal. Yeah, but we're gonna use a railway just to get there. Just to make sure we don't like, you know, <laughs> leave it out in the open. That would be a really, really bad decision. Alright, the oh, these guys are really strong. Just like move upwards as much as you can. Once we can get these guys over there, that's gonna be beautiful. Alright, so let's do that one more turn. I just wanted to see like how much... Oh, August 4. Okay, so that was from July... 20 cent. Yeah, that's, I, I don't know how it decides how much it's gonna jump ahead. <laughs> it, seems, it seems a little strange. Okay. Oh, so now we gotta worry about supplies. So essentially some of our fleet has low supply, so we gotta make sure that we could... We could actually use this unit to resupply some of the fleets. So we could actually move here and give the supply back. We had that button there previously. And same with our sort of land armies. But I think first we just need to kind of get them all to close to one another. Yeah, and then... Th there was that option. Normal reinforcement. Underneath the December. Yeah. Yeah, but if we moved here, we were able to do like supply beachhead. Yeah, so we could just say, hey, I need you to supply. Yeah, I clicked that wrong. Sorry, let me show it again. Supply them. Two landing and received supplies, and then we could move like around maybe in the next turn. But I think this is a good time to end the episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, write down in the comments and you can click on the right to watch some other war games that we play on this channel. I'll see you there. Bye bye.